All right. Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, Couch Surfing Warwick's book tour. I'm Liz Fenton. I'm here with my best friend and co-author Lisa Sankey. Uh, we've written seven books together. The seventh comes out this July 14th called How to Save a Life and it's a heart pounding love story. And uh, we're gonna be having our own event at Warwick's on July 15th, more details to come about that. But we're not here to talk about that tonight. We're here to uh, talk with an amazing debut author. Um, and, and Julie, I'm gonna segue over to you. Okay, so welcome everybody and welcome Margo. I know this is a little bit different than a normal book tour, but we're so glad to have you on couch surfing book tour. So this is a great thing. And if it wasn't for these two ladies, uh, Liz and Lisa, we wouldn't be here. So thank you ladies for organizing this. This has really been so much fun doing these and highlighting um, well-known authors and brand new authors. So we're so excited to have Margo here today. Um, I'm going to be putting into the link how you can buy Margo's book um, and also how to buy How to Save a Life um, and more details about that. So um, Warwick's, you can, any way you can get a book, you can get it from Warwick's. Online, call us, come to the store, we're open. Um, somebody asked earlier where we're at. We're located in La Jolla in San Diego, California. Um, Warwick's.com is our email or is our um, website. So um, I do the push that it's like, you know what? Um, independent bookstores need you to buy books. So if you're gonna buy Margot's book, buy it from Warwick. So with that, you guys have a great conversation. Thank you. Um, and yes, buy your books from Warwick's. Um, all right. Well, we are so excited to have Margot Diru, I say that right, uh, with us um, today. She was born in Juneau, Alaska. Before turning to fiction, she was a waitress, a teacher, and a marketer. She now lives in California with her husband and daughter. Her debut, The Lost Diary of Venice, was published on Tuesday. Congratulations. Thank right, you, Lisa. and thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. I'll turn you over to Lisa, where she'll ask you all the hard-hitting questions. <laughs> yeah, get okay. ready. They're okay. really hard-hitting. Um, <laughs> well, uh, welcome and happy Pub Day on Tuesday. I'm excited for you. Um, Publishers Weekly calls The Lost Diary of Venice scintillating. Sarah Gio says it's enchanting from the first page. And it's also been chosen as an indie next pick for June. Congratulations on that. That's a big deal for a debut. Um, can you tell us what The Lost Diary of, of Venice is about? Yes. OK, so <laughs> I'm just going to launch into the pitch because I want everyone to, to want to run out and get it. Um, <laughs> am I speaking at a, right, at a good volume? First of all, everybody can, yeah. can hear me well. OK, um, so it is kind of part historical fiction, part romance, and it's a dual narrative. So it takes place half in 16th century Venice, half in modern day Connecticut. And we start out by meeting a shy, introverted book restorer named Rose. Um, she has just lost her father, who she was caretaking and very close to. So she's feeling a little, a little tender, a little bit lost. And um, one rainy day, a very handsome artist named William walks into her store and he has a treatise that he, from the 16th century that he wants her to uh, repair. And right away she recognizes that it's a palimpsest, which is where um, one text has been scraped away and then written over on the top. And so immediately there's a little bit of a mystery um, what does that first document say? And there's also a, an immediate conflict because Rose and William have this instant attraction, but William is married. So it's a little bit mm. fraught. And yeah, it's a little messy. <laughs> um, then, we, then we jump to uh, five centuries earlier to Venice where we meet um, William's ancestor, Giovanni Lamazzo. And he is a renowned portrait painter, but he's going blind, he's losing his sight. And he has just been um, commissioned to paint the courtesan to a military commander. Um, and he realizes that, that this is probably going to be his last painting. Um, and he's been capturing his final moments in a diary. Um, what he doesn't realize is that he's going to fall in love with the courtesan, which is a very dangerous relationship. And it takes place against the backdrop of war between Venice and the Ottoman Empire. Um, 
And so there's a lot of tension in that historical narrative. And as Rose and William uncover Giovanni's diary and uncover his love story, they're forced to confront their own feelings and their own relationship. Um, and so it all kind of weaves together in that way. Um, and it's a book about art. It's a book about, you know, um, you know, sociocultural clash. And most of all, though, it's a book about love. And it's a book about almost love, about these moments where, you know, you wonder if the timing had just been a little bit different, would something, you know, what, what could have happened? And I feel like we all have those I feel like we all have those in our in our life where we can look back and say, oh my God, if things had just lined up a little bit differently, what if? And in a way, this kind of makes me think of how to save a life where you're like, you know, let's, there's, there's all these different parallel routes that life could take. Um, and for me, I found those, those what if moments and those kind of almost love moments to have a really bittersweet quality to them. And um, I was really motivated by that in my writing. Did that make any sense to how that, how that? It did. That, okay. You did okay. a nice job. And I was, um, it fits perfectly into my next question because oh, good. This, because this is your first book, I'm always curious, how long had this idea sort of been swirling inside of you? And uh, then how did you think of it? Because it is quite an intricate, mm -hmm. yet very relatable. I mean, the what if is, is, a question we can all ask, but it is quite an intricate um, plot. So how long had you been thinking about it and then how did you think of it? So when I was in grad school, I went to school in Kansas. Um, I got a, a scholarship right when the economy collapsed in um, 2008. So I was like, that sounds like a good idea. I should go do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and what, yeah, it was, um, which is nothing compared to what today's graduates are facing. But um, uh, I, I, I came across it in a library. I came across the actual Giovanni Lamazzo and his treatise. And it's this amazing document. It has all of these um, kind of mystical looking illustrations and it just stuck with me. And I started researching him. I learned that he really did lose his sight. I learned he, the year that he lost his sight was the year that um, Venice and the Holy League kind of went to war against the Ottoman Empire. The more I researched, the more compelling all of it, all of it seemed. And it just, it was one of those things that just got under my skin. And I didn't do anything about it. And I didn't do anything about it because I don't have an MFA. I don't have a background in writing and I didn't think that I, I didn't think it was a possibility for me, even though I've always loved writing. I had a lot of really limiting beliefs about myself. And so I needed to work through those before I allowed myself the opportunity to kind of follow this dream. And for me personally, what happened is I had, a, I got into a, a pretty stressful corporate role and had this creative idea lingering underneath my skin and the tension between those things just became too great for me. And so now that this is out in the world, now that I've like, my dream has come true, I'm kind of on a mission to also encourage anyone else who's, you know, who's writing and doesn't feel like they're, you know, doesn't want to give themselves the, the possibility of thinking, oh, this could happen for me, I want to say, yes, it can keep going and, and offer them encouragement. So. so what was the process like from, uh, I guess when, I guess, how long did it take to write it? And then how long did it take to get published? Mm, got it. Um, so it, it lingered in my head as an idea forever. And then once I said, nope, I'm doing this, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to commit to it. Um, I would say writing it took um, probably two years um, with a really stressful job. I woke up at 5 a.m. every day and just wrote it. Um, and then <clears throat> editing took a year and my editor is a miracle worker and taught me so much. I'm so grateful to her, Shauna Summers at Valentine. Um, and then the publishing process. So I got the first agent that I queried, which is I'm in, wow. insane. 
Wow, that is, that is insane. Like, yeah, tell more I, about that for anybody listening that looks for an agent, um, how amazing oh, that is. That's, I mean, so, but the thing is, is that um, I, I spent so long on my query letter. I, I can, I, is it possible to do a quick poll? I'm curious how many people joining are like aspiring writers or I'll just speak to people if they're aspiring writers. But well, like, we can ask and if you're in the chat, they can say if they are. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can see, see your editor, like, your editors on the call too. Shana oh, Shana. oh, oh yes. She's so just exciting. with no video, oh, but we see so, her name. <laughs> oh, she's so we amazing. see you, Shauna Summers. My, you just got your call out. I I was pregnant when I was editing and I had a doula and so I call Shauna my book doula because she <laughs> oh wait how do I get to the chat she's oh, saying hi go. everyone <laughs> oh there we go oh yay um so yeah so so the querying I really approached the query very very seriously and I had um so so many people help me edit the query letter really go over it um and I, I spent a significant portion of time on the query letter. And I feel like probably for authors, after you've gotten to, you know, you've done the marathon of writing your book and then you're faced with the query letter and you're like, oh, I don't want to spend another huge chunk of time on this. But it, it's, it's like you got to just down that Gatorade and, and you know, go back to it. Um, and, uh, and so the 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 query for me was a big investment and for, in in my experience it really paid off because it did allow me to get the attention of of my agent um and yeah and and when i got the, the email from the agent I, I i just broke down crying my friend pulled over i was in the car and my friend like pulled over to the side of the road and was oh like, Are you okay? yeah. I was like yeah i don't know yeah. i think uh yeah that's the best I think that's the best email you can get. Um, I remember when we got ours. It's amazing. I mean, we were, we, our story is a little bit different. We got our editor first and then our agent. So it went in the reverse. So we got a, uh, an email from an, our editor saying, I want to buy the book. So, and that was like the best yeah. day of our life. How, so how common it, is that? Uh, it's not, we, we had just gotten lucky. That, yeah. Uh, but we had Hendrix, years yeah, before yeah, that they, of trying though. Years. Yeah. Yeah. Greer Hendricks books. was at Simon and Schuster and it's a very long story. We're not going to bore everyone here with this, okay. but she had gotten a hold of our manuscript uh, through something else, but we were unagented. And so she contacted us and said, we want to buy this. Who do you want as your agent? Which is also oh, another wow. fun way to go. Cause you're like, oh, my. I, I want Elizabeth Weed with book group. And it's like, done and then you move on um i have lisa i have a question i have a question in the chat and i have a question an email question right okay can we um i see the one in the chat and can i just ask another question before yeah go one? for it um, yeah go for it okay um i just wanted to ask a little bit about your process to take it back to the book the process in creating oh. your characters um i'm always curious to hear how authors do this is it it was it very structured or did you just sit down and kind of say i'm going to figure it out as i go so again not coming from the mfa background not coming from a, a background where i had been educated in this for me the process was really messy and i initially started by just uh, I don't know if you've watched Elizabeth Gilbert's TED talk on like the muse and, and writing, but it was very much feeling like these voices were coming through me onto the page. And I just was taking down notes and um, I wrote in, in snippets, I wrote scenes out of order um, and then tried to sort of piece together what was the story that was wanting to be told here. Um, I think the having the actual physical document of the treatise provided a nice uh, structure for me. Um, it it allowed me to have the grounding of that historical time period, and the 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 events of the historical time period were also so helpful. They just all I, I they were they allowed me to fit everything into place around these actual events, and the modern day. Um, 
I knew I wanted a book restorer. I knew that wanted to, that was going to be the link between the two. It's also, I love books and I love old manuscripts mm-hmm. and like, you know, vellum. And, um, and so that really spoke to me, but is the, the modern day kind of developed over time. And I think it developed in, as a ref, uh, in, 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 in mirroring the, historical relationship as I developed the historical relationship I knew okay I need to have a reflection of that in in the modern setting and what would be what is going to be different what is going to be the same how are they going to interact with each other across time does that answer your question yes it does I'm I'm always like it's fascinating that you just kind of wrote scenes and thought I'm going to fit, you know, that's, mm-hmm. we're so, li- I'm, I'm so linear. So, so now that, now that I've done this once, I'm, I'm taking your approach. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, now that I'm working on something I, because it was such a learning process to me, right. Going right. through and having to stitch things together that I had to educate myself on what are the the arcs that are going to be satisfying for a reader? What is the structure that a reader is going to anticipate and want? Because I very much want to make my reader happy. I'm not writing, I'm not doing an art for art's sake at all. I want, I want to write to have a relationship with the person on the other end who's reading. And so I, I really want to be in service to the reader. And so I really wanted to make sure, am I, Am I hitting these marks that they're going to want and that they're going to crave? And um, uh, there's a, a website called the Story Grid where there's a bunch of resources. If anyone's an aspiring writer, that was really, really helpful for me in terms of breaking down structure. And now that I'm working on a new piece, I'm approaching it much more in, in terms of your approach, which is I'm doing an outline and I'm really thinking through how is everything gonna gonna knit together? How do I hit these beats that that readers are really gonna want? Um, and I'm grateful for the messiness of the first project, though. I'm grateful for, you know, having to sort of flounder around because it it um, it took a long time, but it helped me connect to my voice as a writer. I think. I I think you kind of hit it on the head when you say you learned so much in the editing process. I mean, I think all, you know, we've been lucky to work with some amazing editors. And I think that we take all those pieces to the next book and those lessons. So like, you'll take all these lessons and, you know, she'll be, Shauna's going to be in your head when you're writing the next book. I have to see those notes. (laughs) I have to say though, it is, I think I cried the first time I got an email back from Shauna because it was such a joy to have someone else be in it with me. Like you, you two write together. And so you get to have this conversation and bounce ideas off each other. And it was such a joy to finally have that. Um, And there's, you learn so much from someone who is, um, who has that eye, you know, that editor's Mm -hmm. eye. That's such a specific talent. So um, yeah. we we have a we have a question here um, that I think relates to the last question. Uh, Joyce is asking, how complex was the research process? Was that something you enjoyed? How much did the editing process require? Additional, I think she's asking addition says additional process, but I think she's asking if the editing process required additional research. Hi, Joyce. Joyce She's is my shaking former her head yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, oh, I miss you. Um, so how much, so the question is, did the editing process require additional research and how much research was required up front in the first place? So much. And, and, in for me the it's it was it's such a uh, a challenging balance between um going down these rabbit holes and coming back with so much information that it allows you to create really great texture historical texture and just getting lost in the, in the, you know just getting lost in the weeds and i'm constantly trying to to walk that tightrope um but i i read um a ton of books. Um, I can, 
if anyone is interested, I can name some of the names that were helpful to me. But um, yeah, I read so many books initially um, and again, reached a point where I had to say, I'm, I'm using the research as a crutch. It's time to write. It's time to, it's time to put pen to paper. I, you know, you can, you can be in the, in the archives for forever, at least I can. Um, and then once we were in the editing process, um, because I had spent so long researching in part out of my own fear of, you know, of take of, of getting to the writing um i didn't have to do as much research during the editing process it was it was there uh, i'm gonna take joyce off just for one second so she can say hi to you because <laughs> i see her hey j click on mute joyce there you go <laughs> let you guys have oh I'm gonna tear uh, up. <laughs> I still can't. So I can't really hear. So sorry, Joyce. I'm we can't hear you. you. But, we, but we can tell you're really happy to see her. So moving on. That's sweet <laughs> that she came to support you. Oh, that was the, the best. It, oh, stressful the best job thing. is where you guys met. So so um, yes, I I found it stressful, Joyce. I don't know how you know. This is like <laughs> essential. The 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 um other part of that was that the team was just, I was just spoiled. We had such right. a wonderful team full of just, it was everyone, but it was tech. It was in the tech industry. And I found that industry in particular, you know, to be stressful. There's big budgets. There's a lot on the line. Um, and yeah, I was waking up in the middle of the night, like, Oh no, did I think of this data set? Did I, did I send this email? You know, it was so. And then you were but, waking up at 5 AM to write your debut novel, uh, which yeah. we can relate to that. We were both working in pretty stressful jobs and um, also writing on off hours too, when we were, um, although unlike you, we, it took us a few more manuscripts before we, we got to the one. I'm happy for you that you you wrote one and that one got published. That is amazing and great. And it's always I, happy to hear I, that, you know? Like, like pinching myself. <laughs> yeah. But that, that just means it was your time and clearly talented. So, you know, suck it up and, and you know, enjoy it. Well, honest, I mean, honestly, the thing about this book for me was that the, the characters really did feel like they wanted, they had, they wanted to come to life. It's, it was a weird feeling of, of it not feeling about me and not being a reflection of me. And I was just here in service of the book and trying to do the best I could, you know, and you know, failing and getting back up and trying again. But the book really seemed to have an energy all its own and, and really wanted to come through. Um, which I, I, and I have so many questions for you two about your writing process. I don't know, if, you know does it feel that way? Do you, do you have characters that are like, hello? You know. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, sometimes I, I think um, that it, it'll be, it's not, at least for me, before the book, before we think of the book idea. Maybe it's different um, with you because it's historical fiction. I don't know, but for us, we'll think of the idea and then the characters will kind of come to be and, 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 and guide us, so to speak. But I don't know that there's been a character yet that's trying to break out. What about you, Liz? I mean, I think as we generally tend to write a, like a higher concept book, we owe, like Lisa mentioned, we always come up with the concept first and then how to execute it after. So I think that's, Maybe the opposite of some, right. but I think because we we generally like to take like a narrative question or a concept, and then we're like, how do we answer that, or how do we, you know, take this journey with this question or concept? Um, but I think once we're writing, I mean, I think you know, some some books are easier than others. I mean, some are just delights, and you love all the characters, and some are like it's like wrestling, like a wildebeest that you, you know, every day. So <laughs> you, and you never know which it's going to be. So you start writing it. So, you know, I'm sure all yours will be easy. Well, it's working, whatever you're doing, it's working. <laughs> oh. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, did you say you had another yeah, question back I, to I, me? 
I have oh, is it the one about the, um, the yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, let I'll ask the one and then let's ask that one, right? To go okay, with it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, go ahead. So there's a question that came in and on email, but it ties into the question I was going to ask first, which is um, your cover. Uh, I think is really stunning. I was going to actually ask you if you have a copy there. Um, very stunning cover, and uh, I can see a lot of uh, historical fiction, historical romance fans just like picking that up and just, you know, wanting to, to, to know more about what the book's about. I think it's a very um, uh, exciting cover. And I'm wondering how involved were you in the design process? What was that like? No, not very involved. And thank God, because <laughs> I would have messed this up. <laughs> I mean, I would have, I, I'm so in awe of, so this is done by Victoria Allen. I want to make sure I got her name. So this is Victoria Allen. And when I think about the job of an art director who has to communicate all the aspects of a book and have it be, you know, appropriate for that book's genre and category and, and the moment, I'm, I mean, that's, I'm very much in awe of, of, art directors who create covers. Um, and I wasn't super involved in this and I'm, I'm actually really grateful for that because I do think I would have messed, <laughs> messed it up because I don't have my finger on the pulse of, of what, you know, right. what readers are expecting or what they're going to gravitate towards. And, um, and also I would probably have been so indecisive. So <laughs> um, I'm, I'm thankful that, that the art director kind of came in with a, a clear vision and I was yeah, able clearly, to just all I, yeah oh. clearly the art director knows Beautiful. what a reader is going to want and also the the you could go so many different ways with what the story is about I mean I think I would be at a loss for what to even suggest and we feel the same way it's like we sometimes we kind of know what we're hoping for but other times it's just like you know uh, we'll defer to you because this is your expertise so but they hit yeah, it, I mean, they hit it she, out of the park there. Yeah, there was there was a little bit of back and forth about if her eyes should be closed or open. Oh, and so, oh I like so that open. was a big Yeah. That was yeah, that was that, and, there, and those and then little there was details a can be very important. And then actually. there was a there they can be. And then there was a version where she was looking this way oh. versus directly oh. at the reader. And that was a big conversation too, because it was like, is this to is this is the, is the female gaze too intense here like you know do people <laughs> are people going to be comfortable with that but i you know and i i didn't i wasn't sure which way was the right way but now that it's out and now that i've had time to you know um really become at home with the image i'm so glad that it ended up with the direct gaze i think that's that's the one but, oh yeah, I, li I yeah. like it. Yeah, I think yeah, she should be looking at you, not away. Yeah. I like her. I like the direct gaze. We're powerful. Power yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Powerful yes. woman. <laughs> well, I um I received an email um today or yesterday from Andrea, who's on this call, um who wanted me to ask this question. Um, she uh is asking about the Kindle version of your book, which may be the same in print. There are uh, they're really cool chapter break designs. And she's wondering if you designed that or if there's a particular significance. And she said, it's a good book. And I can see you, Andrea. Can, oh, I see you. you. She's there. She's waving. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. And you have San Francisco in the background. I'm in San Francisco mm -hmm. also. Um, and I think I recognize you from previous uh, couch surfing episodes, I believe. Yeah. Um, it's, it, when I was writing, I did make symbolic breaks, um, and to me, those were were beats, and they were little pivot points in in the book. Um, and then, in the process of it being edited, they made them much more beautiful <laughs> than I had. I had these little like arrow marks, um, and so I did create those breaks um, because. Yeah, they just they just seemed like that's where I wanted to to have the reader shift slightly. Um, I'm glad that you like them. 
Yeah. That's, that's awesome. All right, Andrew, we got, you said Lisa back to you. I don't have any questions oh. right now, in okay. the chat. but just a reminder, if you guys want to ask questions or make a comment, uh, just hit your chat button and we'll ask, or we can take you off mute if you want to ask yourself. All right. Well, I want to ask also about the title. It's another thing I'm always curious to hear. Was it your title? Um, uh, did, was it the, the original title, I mean, or did it, uh, did it change? It changed. So um, my original, so when I, when I first was started working on this, I had, was calling it the science of shadows, which is uh, the phrase that Giovanni Lamazzo, the actual Giovanni Lamazzo used in his treatise. Um, and it's the, it just kind of got me in and um, I, that was my working title. And once it was in the hands of my editor, um, I think that felt like maybe just a little bit too dark. It just didn't seem like the right fit for the book as it ended up in its entirety. Um, and then we had, then it was, it's interesting because I think it was, I, I don't know if it was my agent or Shauna, or maybe it happened in a conversation between them, but right away they said, what about the Lost Diary of Venice? And then we had emails back and forth with long lists of other titles. And then at the very end, we were like, no, that first one. Oh, she said at lunch between her and, and, and the agent. Um, and so it was a conversation between, between them where they kind of brainstormed this. And then we had epic emails and came back to that very first one. I think that happens a lot. I think you feel like, could we have thought of it that easily? Maybe we need to explore 27 other options and then it just comes back to the first one because it's like yeah. the gut instinct is you're, usually yeah. right. Your editor is commenting here at lunch between me and the agent, which is what you yeah. chiming in. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, she just, she just read that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> They're both in New York, and I'm I'm in uh, San Francisco, and I'm like, thank God. Who is your agent? I, I think I'm, I can say that Alexandra. Yeah. Oh, I, oh my goodness, make uh, Alexandra. Ma oh, I'm gonna mispronounce her last name. Oh, Mash I Machinist. pronounce Beth all the time here. It's fine. It's okay. Did I, Alexandra. Shauna, did I say it? Did I, Alexandra Machinist. Did I say it right, Shauna? <laughs> I've. Yeah, this is so in my meet. You know when I talk to her, I'm always like, oh no, I'm gonna, she's always oh, said it right. Okay. Oh, correct. Um, correct. I'm always like, oh no, I'm gonna say your name wrong. Um, and I, we've, we've met and we talk constantly and I'm always like, am I saying it right? Am I saying it wrong? Second guessing myself constantly, but. That's okay. I think Liz, I saw Liz does it all the time. <laughs> I do. Anyone, yeah, it's a name you. thing. Fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, she, anyone who has attended any of these events <laughs> knows that I pretty much mispronounce everybody's name who comes on here. It's kind of even when they mind. tell her how to pronounce it. I was oh, yeah. actually really proud of you that you got Margot's last name right. Yeah, I spelled it out phonetically on my piece of paper. <laughs> so I got on the thing. So, um, I have uh, did a you, question, Lisa? Can I? Okay. Uh, here, yeah. Go ahead. Christine's wanting to know what authors inspire you, Margot. Okay, so here is, I anticipated this question and I'm always really interested by this question because I'm curious, is it wanting to know who I'm personally, I'm always wondering if the, if the person asking the question is trying to figure out who I personally as a writer am inspired by or if they're secretly wanting to know other people in my genre or other books that might be similar to mine that they might enjoy. Um, because I do read, uh, now that I'm in historical fiction, know who inspires you. Okay. Um, so for me, it's anyone who really nails that sense of place. Um, and when I'm writing, I also have, I also read poetry. Like that's just my honest answer. When I'm sitting down and working on a book, it's poetry that I turn to because it's poetry that helps me um, really get to the level of the, the, the sentence level and the, 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 the word choice. And as a writer, I really love 
to have to try to have a sense of lyricism and a sense of rhythm that's something that I'm working on um, and that I want to imp you know improve upon as a writer and poetry is is what helps me get into that that mindset um, and so you know I I love all the usual suspects I love Mary Oliver I love Billy Collins I love Pablo Neruda, you know, romantic poet, poets. Um, and there's also a poet um, from Alaska, Elena Kalidic Davis, who, who wrote And Her Soul Out of Nothing. And it is an older book and it is so beautiful and I would recommend it. But if people are wondering what I'm reading right now to get inspired by in the future, I'm happy to, to share that like to be read list as well. Yeah, share that. Yes, share that. Okay. I'm interested. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I wanna know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, take, I'm taking um, notes. Okay, okay. Um, so so for, because this is my first book, when I started out writing, I didn't really know what kind of writer I was. I didn't know what I was gonna end up with. And at the end of this, now that I know, okay, I'm. I have this deep love of historical fiction. I love research. I love that category. And so I'm trying to read other authors who are really, you know, knocking it out of the park in this, in this area. Um, and so I have some covers because I know you, I know you ladies love covers. So I took, the, the, these are on their way. These are all books that have just come out and I've ordered and I'm, and I have to also be honest, I had a baby and it's just now that I'm seeing the light of having time to read. So I'm very much looking forward to it. You get a pass, um, you get a pass, you get a baby. Oh my gosh, and a book. oh my gosh. I know, writing Almost a book Almost at the same time. Yeah. You like yeah. gave at birth the, and finished the book like within like two weeks, right? At the, yes, yes. And so it's, I have not had a lot of time to read. I'm, I'm terribly behind and I'm so looking forward to she's finally napping she's finally sleeping a little bit more and so yay. I finally have I'm like oh, yay um and these are the books that are I'm excited to be digging into um this one is the lions of fifth Ave. no oh no the, can you see that cover oh we yes, can see Fiona, Fiona Davis Fiona yes oh, good. that we is a, I'm so that's a good one. excited about it we I'm love so Fiona. excited about I'm so excited about this book um, because it's historical fiction and it's a dual narrative. And so I'm so, I really want to see how she treats that. And it takes place in the New York Public Library. So it's like book nerds dream. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. This I think came out already, but it's out in paper. I think it's out in paperback now, time after time. And this, I saw that this was compared to Benjamin Button. Um, is oh. it is both backwards probably? Who's the, who's and, the and, author? And, Who's the Lisa Grunwald. Lisa Grunwald. Oh, oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And so they compared it, it's been compared to um, Benjamin Button and Time Traveler's Wife, which, oh my mm. gosh. I oh, then I, ha I have to read it then. I'm reading it then. I love, oh, I loved that book. And so I'm so excited about this. Um, this is just because I love Paris. The First Actress by C.W. Mm -hmm. Gortner. Um, and this is about Sarah Bernhardt and like, uh, I'm, I'm such a, I'm such a Paris nerd and Sarah Bernhardt was such a great feminist, you know, amazing woman that I kind of want to, and I really want to see how he treats Paris during the Belle Epoque because that's such a cool time period. Um, and then this one too, close up. Amanda Quinn. I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this is like 1930s Hollywood and I was just like, sign me up, I'm done. It's like, right. I love that time period, 1930s Hollywood. So those are ones that I have picked out and they're on the way. I'm, I love supporting my indies. So I'm, you know, I'm doing the slightly longer shipping time and, um, and Good. trying, and trying, Julie that, would I'm like trying to, to order. That. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she is not too, Right on cue, two thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Julie, can you put uh, the links uh, of those books in the chat if anybody wants to purchase? And I can text you what they were if you forgot. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, we'll put, there's, we'll put some, oh, there's, some of those links in the chat in case you guys want to buy the, her recommendations from Warwick's. Thank you. Um, yeah. All right, Lisa, back to you. 
I'm really excited about the Fiona Davis book. I love, I've met, I, we've met her and she's just really lovely. And then beyond that, just love her books. So, and New York Public she's, Library, I mean, that's, you had me there, so I'm in. Right, and there's, and there's book heists. <laughs> like, okay. That I've is never good. Met her, I think, yeah. I've never met her, but we exchanged a, 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 tw a tweet and so I feel like oh. <laughs> she's very sweet. She's very she's super sweet. nice. And I, and, and very supportive uh, of other authors in the community, which, which is great. Um, so I have a question about being a debut author and publishing during this crazy time in our country. Like, cause obviously, you know, you, 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 you get the deal, you know, your book's coming out. This is not at all what you were planning for, I'm sure. So what has it been like for you um, to go through this? So, I, you know, I was thinking about this as well. And I think there is a little bit of a silver lining in that I have nothing to compare it to. I don't, I, you know, if I had had a book come out previously and you know, a splashy, you know, pub day celebration and a, a tour where I got to go to bookstores and then now I'm here and I don't get to do anything. I think I would be feeling that a lot more acutely. And instead I'm just like, well, I, I don't have anything to compare it to. And so I'm able to just kind of say it is what it is. And, mm -hmm. and I'm still happy, you know, and and it's, it, you know, I, and also I did sort of wrestle with, is this, how do I reconcile, you know, wanting to celebrate this book in the midst of, of what's going on today. And I, I do really believe that people need escapes, even if it's just to recharge, even if it's just to gather your mental energy and your emotional energy back to yourself again to 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 face the day again to you know be be looking at the news again we we need those breaks and we need those moments of respite and so that's I hope that the book gives that to to readers and I think historical fiction does that like no other you know nothing else you're you're in a completely different time and place and um and it it yeah it's a journey and it is a very deep escape and so I hope it can be of service in that way um but as for me personally you know I don't have anything to compare it to and having a kid puts it all in perspective you know like she right. has done something so cute and big on all of my big days that have totally overshadowed me so I'm like you know she she helps me keep everything in perspective Right. I mean, you have obviously have a very good attitude about it, but I do think the silver lining is that your book and, and many books right now can be an escape that everybody needs. I mean, I think people, I think people are reading almost more than ever. I think in the beginning, a lot of us had a hard time with it, but I think people are, you know, getting back into their rhythm and, and now they're looking for something that can, you know, that can be an escape and I think your book sounds like it will be exactly that so I mean there's only so much 90 day fiance that everyone can watch and right. I, I speak from experience so you know they have to start yes. reading at some point I mean, I, both of us I, when this first started happening we just went down this like Netflix rabbit hole you know just like and and, and cooking rabbit hole and now like we're we're, we're reading again which is nice <laughs> I will admit, I heard you say 90 Day Fiance on the podcast, and I was like, mm, I might need to watch that. <laughs> oh, I don't start. There's so many spinoffs. It's now it's Happily Ever After, then this horrible couple from Bay got their own spinoff, and then I started watching them, and then it's like, it's, I, I just honestly had to cut it off one day. Lisa kind of shamed me because she had already cut it off, but it's a- uh, uh, Yeah, it's a, I had to let go. It was, uh, it was good for a minute. Um, I have another question. We have soft time, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, on I was looking at your Instagram, uh, and uh, your daughter is very cute, by the way. 
And you said something I wanted to ask you about. Uh, you said the world needs creativity and art now more than ever. Can you, mm. can you explain what you meant by that? I think it ties mm. into what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, I, I, to me, that is light in the darkness. Creativity and art is, and, and anytime, I think that what we're going through now is is really needed and i'm so hopeful and i'm um i have all the feels about about what we're experiencing and um and i'm so supportive of of this this change and this deep transformation um but it it is it is challenging and it is emotionally challenging and it is mentally challenging and um and to me, yeah, creativity and art are, are, are what unify us. They're, they're something that for me personally, as a, as a creator, when I'm writing, I feel lit up. I feel authentically myself. I feel alive. And right now, I think the more people that can feel lit up, that can feel like they're being self-actualized, the, 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 the better. That's what we need. We need people who are shining their light as hard as they can shine it, you know? Um, and so I, and, and after I, I wrote this book, I have been able to share with aspiring writers, hey, this is what worked for me, and also be learning from more established writers and that support that that artist to artist support has been so rewarding as well um but does that answer your question yeah yeah i mean I just, okay you were you were writing that and i thought i wonder if she can expound on that because it uh it um i thought that's what you meant and it's just a nice thing to think about right now and all the with all the noise you know yeah and i and I think there's, there's, there's creative expressions that are happening right now that are so, you know, unique. I, I'm seeing so many more voices and more makers and, and I'm so excited for that. I'm so excited for these, these voices to be lifted up and to, um, and to be hearing, to be hearing them. And I, I you know, this is our humanity. The arts are, are, are what make us human. And it's, it's, it's always coming from the heart. And so I think that's what I, I, I think we need more, more heart centered, heart centered expression. But. Yeah, it's a beautiful sentiment. A um, couple things, uh, we have a couple more questions. It's 4.50 right now. Just a reminder that today is one of our double features on couch surfing. So at 5 p.m. we'll be bringing in uh, Carrie Clutter, who is the author of East Coast Girls. For those of you that want to stay on, I forgot to mention that in the beginning. So we hope that you stay. Uh, we do have a question in the audience, from the audience, from Holly. Uh, she says, I assume you're going to write another book. Can you give us a hint what it's about? Um, I'm working on another book. I hope, I hope I get the chance to, to do it. Um, and one of the big takeaways for me is that now that this is out in the world, I really want the folks who read this and love it to really love the next book too. That's what, you know, I'm writing for, I'm writing to, to, um, to satisfy, <laughs> I hope, and, and to provide that escape. And so, um, the next project that I work on will also be historical fiction and I'm a hopeless romantic so I can't help but but not have romance in it um and I don't know Shauna am I allowed to say the idea that I'm thinking of I'm not sure um but we'll see what she says uh, oh sure <laughs> she says she, we'll, yeah, we'll see sure. if this we'll see if we'll see if she approves of this it's, it's all TBD but I'm I'm looking at at Paris and the Belle Epoque and um and so yeah so historical fiction romance dual narrative with a really great escape to a, a glamorous a, a glamorous paris so we'll see if we'll see if that comes to life might all subject to change but that sounds fun i can't wait to read it 
Um, let's see. I don't have any other questions here, but Lisa, I think we have time for one more question on your end. You know, that was all of them that oh, I had. Great. So okay. um, we, I think Julie was going to tell us a little bit about um, some of the other events that are coming up since we have some people now and that okay. might want to hear then, about it. Yeah, but before you do, Julie, um, Margo, I just want to say it was such a delight talking to you today. Can you tell everyone where they can find you online, on Instagram, all your social media, your mm -hmm. website? Give it, give it all to us, girl. Okay. So mm -hmm. I, and I would love to um, communicate with folks. If they want to reach out, I love talking. I love connecting. And the best way to do that is Instagram, Margot, oh, it's my name. So you'll have to include all the X's, but Margot underscore DeRue at, at Instagram, on Instagram, and Margot DeRue at Twitter. And those are the best ways. Just slide into my DMs. <laughs> I, would <love> <laughs> I would love to chat. I have a website, margotdiru.com, but um, my husband is helping me with it, and it, I, I hope it comes up tomorrow. So I think social media is probably the best way to, to reach out to me. Okay. Well, we, I mean, it was such a delight to talk to you today. And, you know, we have a such a special place in our heart for debut authors. And, you know, we're really... Please, everyone here, support debut authors. You know, it, this book sounds amazing. Help get it off the ground. Tell your friends about it. Because, you know, in any climate, it's difficult to launch as a debut, and, and particularly right now. So we are sending you a ton of love and wishing you all the best. And we can't wait to see you, you soar in your career. I just have to say how grateful I am to you. I, you know, this is a dream come true. and to 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 have the support of people like you i mean you are you are doing so much for writers right now and i hope that you just feel that love from all of your guests because we need you <laughs> oh you're so I'm, sweet I'm, just, I'm so thankful that you that you've included me here and i'm so thankful to be here and i'm so thankful to people for reading right now um I know that there's a lot on TV, but I'm, I'm thankful to everyone for, for reading books as well. So. Well, we had a lot of help along the way. So we like to go back and uh, help other authors because is, as we all rise, it's, it's good for, for everyone. So thank you so much for being here. Um, we, I'm going to have, I'm going to throw it uh, back to you, Julie, and just to kind of give a little rundown because there's some exciting stuff coming up at Warwick's and then in about five minutes, uh, as soon as Carrie gets here, we can um, jump in and put her in the hot seat. Okay, but again, well, I just, well, you just, so um, Lisa, you, I mean, Liz, you said everything that I was going to say to Margo, um, and so it's just sharing the love here. Um, your book is exactly what our customers love to read. We have a lot of historical fiction fans at the store, so we know that this is going to be a great book um, for our customers. And um, yeah, we love supporting the debut because everybody is a debut author and everybody started out somewhere. So this is going to be one of those historic years, I think. I hope so. And I have to say, I grew up in a small town, no roads out of it. My local bookstore saved my life. So I am, I, I'm so happy to see people supporting their local bookstores as well. Yeah, everybody's um, been great. So thank you. So congratulations. And thanks. we hope we, we will be hearing great things from you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Margo. So, yeah, so we, things that are coming yeah. up next week, um, we have Meg Mitchell Moore, which will be here on June 16th. So that's going to be another one that everybody needs to stay tuned for. Um, and Susie, I'm going to, I'm with you, Liz. I can't pronounce names to say. Uh, you life. and I are, yeah. <laughs> is it Schnall? Oh, Su is it Schnall. That's Susie Schnall. Yeah. Okay. Susie, Susie Schnall. Schnall. And then I we got a double that. header there too, um, with Kimberly Bell. She'll be back to back next Thursday on, um, the 18th. So, um, to talk to you guys for Liz and for Lisa, you can find out the couch surfing tour information on lizandlisa.com but also on warworks.com, we've got all of the couch surfing stuff up. So you can find the links um, by either visiting their site or our site. Um, so we've got about what, like a three minute break here if anybody needs to like. Yeah, Carrie, I think uh, Carrie's uh, yeah. here. So. Carrie's here, um, I gotta find her, I'm gonna find her. I think her Margo's and, gonna yeah. go. 
Margo, it was Thank great. You. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so. I am actually, I'm, I'm gonna stay on because I, oh, I great. love, I love these. I've been loving these. I've been good. enjoying them and just Aww. having such a good time. But I might have to be handling my baby, so I might. Yeah, just you can be muted, girl. Off. You're fine. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. Yeah. Right, so I'll mute and, and turn my video Carrie. off. Carrie. Oh, okay. yeah. Carrie. Bye, Margo. Carrie, you're, yeah, and you're unmuted, Carrie, I think. Try to oh, say okay, something. Cool. Cool. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, great. Okay, great. So we'll start up in uh, about three minutes with this one. Yeah. Take your time. Yeah. Just giving everyone yeah. a minute to get in. Yeah. Uh, Julie, tell, I know not everyone was here before. Uh, did you, did you, I might have missed it. Did you speak about the Ellen Hildebrand event coming up? Did you no. speak to that? <laughs> Yeah, I, was trying to, I was trying to keep a couch surfing, so I was looking, I was no. like, okay, let's keep on the couch surfing. No, <laughs> go over the whole, tell it, girl, we got yeah. two minutes, give them Two the minutes to go. So, um, so we're actually, because the store is open for, for browsing business, so we're not quite open for events yet, although we're going to be doing something with you guys on the 15th in some form of a live event. Um, keeping our social distance, but um, for the Ellen Hildebrand fans out there, um, She's actually coming to the store and we'll be doing a signing. Um, we'll have her out on the sidewalk actually in front of the store. So it's a sidewalk signing. Um, everybody keeping social distance. Um, we're doing it in time slots, which I think is, you know, only 20 people in a time slot so we can make sure that everybody stays safe. So that's going to be really exciting. I think that we're one of the um, test markets on, because we were one of the first stores that actually opened anywhere. I mean, in California for sure. Um, so we're doing things the right way and we're going to have, um, some exciting stuff happening. So I think we're a long time away from having the normal kind of events that we thrive on at Warwick's, but, um, which is gathering everybody at the store and having those packs. You guys have had them. It's like the pack store is so wonderful, but thank goodness for this virtual, these virtual rooms are becoming really fun. And so, yeah. um, I'm really glad that we're doing this too. Uh, Holly's asking, Julie, Holly is asking can, if she can order a signed book from Ellen online from you. Yes. So um, I'm trying to think of what's the best way to do that because we're doing everything on Eventbrite. Um, email me, Holly. It's my email is really easy. It's events at warwicks.com. So pop me an email and I'll tell you how to order a signed book if you can't make it to the um, signing. Okay, well, we're just hitting up on five o'clock and I've been admitting some new people into the room. So if you're just joining us, hello and welcome to the Warwick's couch surfing event with, uh, with Carrie Clutter. Oh, hold on, I'm adding a few more in here. Um, we just finished up with Margot DeRue. And so welcome, I'm Liz Fenton and I'm here with Lisa Sankey and um, we're partnering with Warwick's to bring you some great book tour uh, events. So Julie uh, just gave her spiel about Warwick, so I'm not gonna have you do it again. Although I will mention that you, in the chat, so just for those of you that have just joined, um, there is a chat feature here. If you scroll down to the bottom of your screen, uh, you can click on that. We love when you ask questions or make comments. We'll also also be posting links there to order books from Warwick's that we talk about, obviously uh, Carrie's book, and then also any other book that's mentioned, we'll put there. If you wanna be unmuted and ask her a question yourself, you're more than welcome to, and I'll unmute you. Um, and I'm forgetting to say one thing. About um, how oh, you view it. How, how to view right. it. Right. Oh, thanks. Yeah. If you want up in your right hand corner <laughs> on a, thank you, on a computer, uh, you can choose speaker or gallery. Gallery shows you everyone. Speaker shows you whoever's speaking. It's left on your iPad and right on your computer. And you're all um, muted just so that this is the best ex uh, listening experience for everybody. Before um, you go, Liz, though, I just wanted just from Warwick's, I, I know I talked a little bit, but I didn't welcome Carrie from Warwick. So Carrie, thank you for being here from Warwick's. We're really excited to have you. So you guys are going to have a great conversation today. Thank you. Absolutely.
Uh, well, we're excited to have you, Carrie. I'm just going to jump right in with your bio, and then I'm going to uh, pass it over to Lisa. So Carrie holds a degree in literature and is the critically acclaimed author of the young adult novel, The First Time She Drowned. She also has an extensive background in theater, having appeared in film, television, and on stage. She lives in Los Angeles and adores her friends, her partner David, dogs, neuroscience, funny people, Montauk, surfing and french fries east coast girls <laughs> is her first adult novel and was published on may 26 welcome carrie thanks for having me can you hear That's me okay awesome. yeah we can hear you great good good all right all right lisa I'm passing uh, to you. thank you so much for being here i just wanted to say first um I love the first time she drowned so oh. i just want i wanted you uh, <laughs> to know that that was a great book um but on to East Coast Girls now. Uh, Nancy Thayer says East Coast Girls is a mix of gorgeous writing and page turning suspense. Emily Henry calls East Coast Girls a brilliant firecracker of a book and Library Journal calls it superb and tailor made for book clubs. Sounds so good just off those three <laughs> reviews, but can you tell us what it's about? Um, East Coast Girls is about four friends from high school. They, they grow up together. They meet in elementary school, actually, and they come from sort of unhappy families. They're all emotionally orphaned as kids, and they find each other and become this sort of pack. And their best times are together, away from their family homes and everything. And then when they get to high school, a really traumatic event happens to them that alters the trajectory of their lives. And they never talk about it. So we meet them again at 30. All of their lives have been derailed in, in one way or another by this event. And they all have, their bond has also been sort of messed with as well. And so they go back to this place in Montauk where they used to set, spend summers together as girls in the hopes of reclaiming their innocence and finding their happiness again and their bond with each other. But uh, best laid plans, secrets refuse to stay buried and uh, things happen and that is where the story is. It sounds so good. I cannot wait to get my hands on a copy. Um, how did you think of the idea for it? Well, I mean, a couple of things. First, it was sort of a personal story to me in that I um, resonate with that sense of having a, a found family. I grew up in a, in a home that wasn't a very happy one, and I found my happiness outside those doors with my friends and they became my family and are still my family. So I was really interested in the idea of lifelong friendships and not only like how amazing they are and what a saving grace they can be, but also how complicated they are, you know, because it is almost like a blood bond, but not. And then I also had this idea that I wanted to write about trauma from different perspectives. So that's why I gave the girls a shared trauma because I feel like um, we all have a different response to trauma. We all cope with it differently. We build defense mechanisms from our experiences with trauma and they're all different in the ways that we cope with it interfere in our relationships with each other. And so we don't always see that someone's behavior is, is because of trauma and because they're erecting their defense mechanisms. And so we have to sort of get beyond that to really see people and see their hearts, especially, you know, when there's friction. So I wanted to give those girls that conflict where they all share this trauma, their secrets about it. They don't each know how they each individually experienced what happened that night. And so it's, you know, it's gotten in the way of this profound love that they have for each other. And so I think the idea came out of that desire to, to look at it from multiple angles. Liz and I have been friends for uh, 30 some odd years. And so we can definitely speak to the complications of life, yeah. long <laughs> friendship and almost, it almost being a blood bond. Yes, so for sure. Um, how, what was your process in developing these characters once you, once you have the idea? Uh, well, I started with the first character, and 
you know, I always put a little bit of me into into my characters, usually something I'm trying to work out in myself. You know, I like to give a character a flaw that I have and also some some life thing that I'm trying to work out. So the, the first thing that happened was that one of my best friends got sick and I was really struggling with that idea of how do you love someone when you can lose them? And how do you stay present to life? How do you keep being, you know, in joy and still deal with this really, the, you know, the fragility of life. And so the first character just kind of came to me from that. She was sort of me working through this feeling of, of sort of sitting on this fence of not wanting to go out into the world because terrible things happen, but not wanting to not go out in the world because then you're sort of not alive. And so once I had her, I knew that whoever was going to be friends with her had to be the opposite. And then each girl became the opposite of that so that they would all, you know, fit together well. And then once I decided how each would respond to trauma, that was really easy in helping me develop their characters and what the trajectory of their life would be. Because, you know, if, if somebody is somebody who's in denial, you can sort of see how their life will play out differently than someone who's angry about it, et cetera. Did you know um, how the book was going to end? Are you a, an outliner, a plotter, or do you just fly by the seat of your pants? I'm a fly by the seat of my pants, and I, I always know that, the, that any book that I write is going to end with hope, because I mm -hmm. believe in hope, and I don't, I don't think it's honest to not end with hope. Um, but I also never want it to all be tied up and perfect because I don't think that's what life is. So I, all I knew was that. I didn't know what was <laughs> gonna happen to them. I didn't know where they were gonna end up. I sort of tend to outline the beginning of books and then let the characters take over. Sometimes I do things that I, I wish they wouldn't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they get more complicated for me. Right. Um, how long does it take you to write a book? Was it, and I'm curious just in the differences in writing a young adult versus an adult, what were the differences there? And if you can well, speak to that a yeah, little bit. Sure. Um, well, you know, the first time she drowned, I actually wrote as an adult book. So it's hard for me to oh. say what that experience was. I did write okay. it as an adult book and we went out with it as an adult book. And all the adult editors said, you know, we don't know how to market this book because it's sort of in that in-between land. And you know, books tend to sell up, like if it's a crossover book, it's easier to sell it from a young adult to adult rather than, you know, vice versa. So right. they had me go and make some things more young adultish. So I had to edit things to be a little bit more resonant to teenagers, but otherwise it was an adult book. And I think you can kind of tell that in, in some of the really <laughs> tough themes that it addresses. Um, that book took me 14 years ago because wow. I was working three days I was living next to a, a woman who played music 24-7 at Full Bottom. So <laughs> trying to write a book was definitely a challenge. Uh, this book took three years. So okay. I'm getting faster, but I'm still- Yeah, I was going to ask struggling. you because there's a lit bit of a gap between them, and I was going to ask yeah. you about that too. So yeah. now we know why. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Three I mean, years. I, you know, and... I, I tinker a lot, so- Yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody's- uh, Everybody's process is different. That's why we always like to ask that because it's, it's, it's a curious thing, you know, um, how we, you know, who outlines, who plots, how a book comes together. So it's, it's different for every single author, yeah. which and I find fascinating. Book. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And so it, right. So we all can have our own thing. And it, you, so you put a prologue in East Coast Girls. Um, why did you decide to do that? Is that, is that, um, did that come about in before or was that something you added after? Uh, no, it was something I added after actually uh, one of my critique partners, Jeff Zentner, who's also an author, he said, he said to me, you know, I need to see the girls before the trauma happens, even if it's just mm -hmm. a moment. And I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Otherwise it's sort of launching into this this dark episode in their lives without knowing what they were like before. Uh, so that's that's how that came out. And then I wrote that. Okay. I, I personally am a big prologue fan. So yeah, me too. Uh, when, so yeah. Cool. So I are. think that's a, that's a re really good way to grab uh, grab your reader. Um, so I agree with your critique partner <laughs> on that one. Um, what about the editing process? Uh, are, are you an edit as you go or do you just write all the way through and then go back? 
No, I, I, first of all, I love editing and I, I absolutely hate writing. Like I hate <laughs> the blank page so much. It gives me so much anxiety. So I'm always trying to get to the editing part. So I probably do it sooner than I should, but um, I really need to have at least a clean 50 pages because I need to feel like the setup is working for me to not feel like it's going to go off the rails, you know, if I just keep going all the way to the end. Um, and I always find that when a, when a book isn't working at some stage, it's usually something in the beginning that's not working. Mm -hmm. So I'm very bit, that takes me the longest is probably the first 50 to hundred. And I revise it probably every 30 to 50 pages, just because I need the language to be pretty because if it's not, I am not compelled to read it. And if I'm not compelled to read it, I'm going to bore myself and not be invested in the story because it's just one of those things. I have to feel like there's something pretty in this book that, that even though it's raw and a mess, that there's something there. So that's usually where I put it is in the sentences. And then how are you when you get editorial feedback from your editor? Is you also love that part love as a, a lover of editing? Love it. Yes. And yeah. the opportunity to like make the book better. It to me is just exciting. You know, they, there's always people see things that you can't see and bring out, you know, things that you mean to be in there, but aren't clear enough. So that to me is, yeah, it's by far and away my favorite part of writing. I can relate to that. I love the editing process too. It's like when we get our edit letter, I'm I, after I digest it and decide they're they're right and accept it all. And yeah. I, I'm I'm excited to jump in and do it. And I think Liz is is um, more about the blank page. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I don't you know about you, the Liz. editing. <laughs> well, I weirdly like in in How to Save a Life. We had to do we had to rewrite the first couple chapters and the last couple and like just from blank. And I actually enjoyed that. But but Lisa enjoys the ticky tacky going through, and I don't enjoy it. So it's it's actually nice because I think it's you good. enjoy it. You don't you don't like taking oh. the blank page in an edit and you know as much as the ticky tacky, right? You know, so we're so, we're a good that works you're for a good us. Pair. Like, yeah. Fortunately, yeah. we we don't love the same thing, so one of us yeah. can do one, one of us can yeah. do the other. Yeah, I you, need she, one of you. Yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> Lisa. Yeah, Lisa has that ability, and I'm not great at this. Is jumping into a scene and inserting, it, and I'm just better more of like a flow through. But she can jump in the scene if there's a note and and fix that. And I tend to take those notes more literally, um, and and so she just is better at finessing them. I'll be like, yeah, like whatever the note, I'll just like shove it in, like totally like, and she has to come. <laughs> uh, I, want, I wanted to take a second just to remind everybody um, that you can ask questions and we want to hear from you or make comments. All you do is scroll down, there's a little chat button and you click and do a chat to everyone and I'll ask the question for you. If you want to be taken off mute, you can ask it yourself or you can just make a comment. And I see Julie has put in a buy link for East Coast Girls there. So uh, be sure if you like what you hear to grab a copy. Okay, Lisa, back to you. I'm going to be clicking on that. I uh, wish I already had it. I don't, so I'm going to be clicking on that link for sure. Hey, I'm in. It, I love the cover. Um, I see someone is, is holding it up there. Um, and I, it's just reminding me how much I love it. And I'm wondering, you know, what, what was your involvement in the planning of that cover? Um, I definitely had a vision for what it would be. I really wanted like a sort of a dark water that was gradiated and uh, big, big type typeset. Um, and they put the umbrellas in. And that's pretty much, it was like, I want this. They were like, we want the umbrellas. And then we were like, great. And it was done. It was the easiest cover ever that ever happened. It was like one shot and done. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, yeah. it's, it's just, it's like, there are just some of those covers that they're going to be sitting, you know, it, on a shelf or on a table in a bookstore, you're just going to pick it up because you have to know. So as we all know, the cover is very important. So I think you have a winner there. Uh, mm -hmm. What about the title? Was it always the title or did it, did no. it change? No, I wanted um, Girls of the Sunshine Highway because the, oh. the highway to Montauk is called the Sunshine Highway and the girls have this, you know, they love that moment when they hit that highway and they're free to be themselves and be happy. But my editor thought that it sounded a little bit like Streetwalkers. 
<laughs> Isn't that funny yeah. how a title can just like yeah ha- bring in completely different things. Yeah. And so it was really, we were down to the wire. I think it was like 1155 at night and we were determined to figure it out by the morning. And I was like, East Coast girls, because I'm an East Coast girl and it's all Mm -hmm. East Coast. And and so I sent it to my agent and my editor and they were like, done. So that's how it happened. It's, I love the title too. And I I like the other one, but I I guess once it's pointed out, I can see what they might be saying. Um, (laughs) <laughs> um let's see i've got some questions oh here. yeah go ahead yeah, yeah. they're okay. always better than mine so uh, uh well, the readers always they, have the better questions <laughs> uh, well they always have great questions but you do a great job um okay the first is from Britt. she wants to know how does your family feel about your books oh. um next question <laughs> oh okay <laughs> got it <laughs> okay let's take that as a, a negative. okay yeah I don't uh, think they're fans I mean uh, you know I don't think they're oh. fans yeah. okay. oh, I'm sorry <laughs> yeah, um, that's all right uh okay so from Susan uh she's asking are there male characters in the book and what roles do they play in relation to the four girls uh there are male characters in the book there is one male character who is the boyfriend of one of the main characters, and he is actually uh, in a semi-conscious state because of the trauma. Mm. Um, So he's, you know, not able to, he's more of a, I I wouldn't even know how to describe it, but then, and then there's um, a couple of love interests, but they are not primary because to me, it's really about the girls. I like that. Actually, I like that. That's yeah. nice. It's good. It's good for the girls. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Did you say you have another or I can oh, that's, that's it. It's back to you, girl. All right. Well, um, I had a question about YA, but now we know the story there. So I don't need to ask that one. How about um, what it's been like to have your book published right now? I'm just always curious about yeah. uh, author's uh, response to this question. Um, you know, it. Um, in one sense, it's less stressful. You know, you're not you're not having to do all the travel and um, you know all of that stuff. Having a book launch always gives me anxiety because it's like I have to make all my friends, you know, haul through traffic in LA to come see it, and that makes me feel bad. Right. Um, so it's definitely less stressful, but also it's less exciting. Um, because of all those things aren't there. And, you know, obviously you're going to worry about sales because the bookstores aren't open. It's right. It's been doing pretty well so far considering, but you know, you imagine what would it be doing if the the stores were open and people were grabbing it off the cover. So, you know, you just kind of have to accept what is, but I think it's a little bit of a bummer. I'm, I just feel lucky that it's not my first book. You know, I see the debuts and to me, that's just heartbreaking that, that this is when their book came out because it's just overshadowed by, you know, the world right now. It's really hard to feel like you definitely don't want to self promote or anything because you're like, this is so, you know, trivial compared to what's happening out there that it just feels silly to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a, yeah. We had a day, uh, Margot, who was on in the four o'clock hour of the debut, and we were talking about even in a perfect environment, it's very hard to launch as a debut without, you know, a base. Um, so I do, I do, I definitely feel for everyone. And, you know, we have our own book to launch in a month, but for the debuts, my, my, my heart really goes out to them because it's, it's, it's tough to get out there with books. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, we're hoping at least through these these uh, conversations we're having with authors on for Warwick's that that that's helping get the word out. And I do think people are reading a lot right now. So I think that um, they're they're looking for a lot of uh, escape. And I think, uh, you know, most books are going to provide that and especially yours. So I do think uh, it's it is going to provide at least a comfort, you know, um, during all this, because still at the end of the day, you're, you wrote a book, you're launching it, like you deserve to be able to celebrate that and be happy about that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah but it's when we, like Liz said, we have um, 
our book coming up. And even though we've we've been asking about it and interviewing authors about it, I know it will feel very different when it's actually us. And so when it's just hard. Uh, it will come out on July 14th. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, hopefully yeah. the stores will be open. All the stores will be open by then. Hopefully. I mean, we're in uh, California. And so I, I know, I think Warwick's is one of the only ones still um, that, that happens to be open because I just think there's a process and Julie can speak to this. Can you speak to this? You're better at this than me to talk about uh, yeah, why your store's um, open. You know, it's um, a lot of the stores are chosen. We have a whole second side of our store that you can't buy online. So Nancy was, you know, when, when we got the okay to open, she was like, let's do it. But other stores are going a little bit more um, slowly than that. We still have gathering rules though in the state of California. So you can't gather with more than like 20 people. So it's hard to have events, you know, yeah. in the store because you still have to social distance. So it's you have to get kind of get creative so the whole event thing and, and launching books and doing that is just crazy but the good news is is that your book is at the store it's on the counter you know what i mean so that's the thing that you know people that are coming to warwick's are seeing your book there so that's a good thing because <laughs> that's what everybody wants i mean all you know author you want to see your book in a store totally you know? yeah. yeah well thank you uh, for having me lisa i have a question over here in the okay. in the chat uh, from Holly. She's asking, was it difficult to, al to align the trauma responses to each character? How did you keep, keep your profiles organized? That's a great question. Yeah, See? it is a great question. <laughs> I think that I, it was, it wasn't as difficult as you think because um, I did a lot of work prior to to writing them where I investigated, you know, what their attachment style is, for instance. I don't know if you know anything about sort of Mary Answorth and the subject of attachment, but how people attach differently. And so, you know, how people attach differently, how people respond to trauma differently. It seemed to come pretty naturally to me the way that they each responded because part of it is they're hitting up against each other as well. So one person's response is going to be different than the others in, in part because of what they each experienced that night, you know, because they each, they have a shared trauma, but they experienced it very differently. Very interesting. Uh, um, Lisa, back to you. Okay. Um, have you, I'm just curious what authors uh, you read and uh, if you've been, if you've been able to read during all this and you're busy with a book launch, but um, if you have any book recommendations. Yeah, I mean, I have been able to read, and not only that, but I have been on such a tear of amazing books. So I am always Ooh, happy to I talk hear. about other people's books. Uh, I love *Be Treed* by Emily Henry. Oh, uh, so good! So we good. read that just too. Perfect loved escapism. It. I just loved it. Um, Lily King, *Writers and Lovers*. I never wanted to end. I was. That was my favorite. Loved it. <laughs> yeah. ah! Sounds like Julie again. <laughs> um, I, I loved My Dark Vanessa. That was like masterfully done. Uh, yeah, I that's could a not good put one. It down. Um, and I loved Dear Edward. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. That, oh, you've got good, you got good books, girl. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, awesome. I was like on a tear. Yeah. <laughs> I kept thinking nothing is going to be able to live up to the last book, and then I would read another one, and it would be amazing. So I... Thankfully, you know, because I do think it would be hard to, to write, to read right now if you don't have something that's really compelling. Right. I'm hoping my next read is going to be Stephanie Dandler's Stray. I loved Sweet Bitter. Oh, oh I, ha I got oh. that. I, ha I ordered that. It's on my bedside table yeah. once I finish what I'm reading now. I'm very, what are you reading um, now? I'm reading The Mothers. Oh, I yeah, Bennett, I that, yeah, And then yeah. I, um, I have her other one, The Vanishing Half, is, is on its way. It's been Number delayed one, right? I guess, it got sold out. I know it's like number one New York Times bestseller, and Amazing. it's like you can't even, you know, get it. So um, I'm waiting for that one to be delivered. I'm sure I they have it. it at Warwick's, though. If anybody oh. um, listening yeah. like to order that, um, oh yes, we do. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, oh yes, uh, we do. <laughs> we we have a question, Lise, um, uh -huh. from, Sarah, from Sarah Ackerman, who is going to be our, she's an author, and she's going to be our guest here at Couchsurfing on June 25th. So 
Um, I'm going to ask her question, but I'm also giving her a little plug. So make sure you join us on June 25th. She is asking, how important is setting to you? Can you tell us about the setting of your book? Sure. Um, yeah, it's funny because we've talked so much about trauma and it's a beach read. And I'm, I'm, uh, every time I get <laughs> yeah. into one of these interviews, I'm like, it's so, it sounds that like I've come written. up a lot. It's you can have trauma at the beach. You can yeah. have trauma. It's okay. But there's I'm also, you know, there's, there's fun and laughter and all of that too. That always gets like second shift. Um, Montauk is was a really I, is where I love the most in the world. It's like the place where I think about it and it makes my blood pressure just go down. Um, and setting is really important to me. I think of setting as like a character in the book. Um, I like to use setting to reflect the, the emotions of what's happening. Um, I always want to write about water because I am in love with the ocean and everything about it. So I just naturally am driven to write about the ocean. So probably all of my books will always be set somewhere where there is water. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I can really picture it when I'm writing. I, where the characters are is very vivid to me. Absolutely. Wasn't, um, was Montauk where, did you watch The Affair? Just as yes. a total side note. It totally yeah. was in Montauk, yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I, I love I that was show. And uh, that's where they actually filmed it? Yeah. Because it yeah. was gorgeous and amazing. Yeah, gorgeous. I was like, I have to go to this place immediately, so. I want to go get a lobster roll from that place where they met. Yes. Julie, uh, someone's <laughs> asking if you could put the books um, that Carrie mentioned uh, in the chat, and I can I can text that to you. Um, yes, I will do that. It, okay, great. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, I am definitely, you had some good ones. I, on um, just as a side note on My Dark Vanessa, that took me a bit. I, it's really good, but I had to stop because it, it's dark oh. at points, and so I had to take a minute. But that is a really, really good book, over, you know, overall. Yeah, it's super dark. I think... As a writer, I was reading so much of it as a writer, you right. know? So I was able to have some remove because I was just thinking, how does she show this trauma bond so masterfully? I know. It was really so well done that the whole time there was just a part of me that was in writer mode going, well, how does she do this? This is incredible. I think I was doing the same thing, but even then I still just had to take some breaks because yeah. it was just so like... But it's it's a really good book for anybody. And it's immersive. Right. I think it's really right. immersive. So that's why it's hard to pull, you know, to, to step away from it. Yeah. Uh, Holly is saying, can yeah. we expect your next book to be called West Coast Girl? <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks. Since I live nice in LA, place, Holly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to interject with that. I thought it was pretty good. Well, now you've got me thinking, Holly. <laughs> I love that. I think that's a song too yes it is <laughs> as i recall from from my youth yes from um, voice. <laughs> yeah um so at, are you working on another book now can you talk at all about that i am working on another book i mean you know i never know until it's done if it's going to work but right now it's a it's a story about an actress who gets publicly shamed and so she goes like into hiding um, and it's very interesting to write about now because she's really isolated and I can completely know what her thoughts are going to be. And, you know, as she's like wandering around the apartment with no one to talk to because I'm living it right now in this, uh, quarantine. So yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. Uh, obviously she does not stay isolated or else that would be a very boring story. <laughs> right. That sounds really good though. So you're like, you're living your own research, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. I hope I don't get publicly shamed. That would, I don't want to live that. Right, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> Just the isolation part. Um, what are you up to when you're not writing? Um, Might be different these days than these usual. These days, but Maybe you, in, in your usual life. <laughs> <laughs> like Netflix, I mean, I don't know what else. Right, right. Um, uh, when I'm... When I'm not in quarantine, I surf, I run, I hang out with my friends, um, I read a lot, and hang out with my boyfriend. You know, I, I, I'm mostly just sort of a jock, and so I'm either doing something athletic or I'm reading. 
And how is it up in LA right now? Has it gotten a little bit uh, a little it's calmer. coming down a bit? It's a little calmer. I'm in Santa Monica, so there was a, it was really, you know, just nonstop helicopters and sirens for a while. Right. But, you know, I was rooting them on. So, um, right. you know, the protesters, not the. Um, yes. And so, yeah, I was for it. And so it, it, I found it kind of exciting. Like this is a horrible thing that's happened, but change is happening. And, yeah. you know, that's that's pretty cool. It is. Uh, we have a question from the audience. Nikki is asking, is it too soon to speculate on which actresses you'd envision as the main four girls when the film ad adaptation in inevitably materializes? I can't talk again. That's, you had to have me stumble over some sentence tonight. So. Well, you know, my boyfriend's dad always reads the books and then casts the characters, which is amazing to us because he's like 76 and he knows all the young actresses. And I have no idea who any of the actresses are because I'm old. Um, so I don't cast them because I really don't know who's who's hip right now. I, I would have to look into it. But I'm always open to casting ideas from other people in this fake world where I have a movie about it. <laughs> <laughs> is there... Uh, is there any adaptation, any optioning, any? Uh, any no, movies? you know, we were, um, I had a film agent. She was taking it to Warner Brothers TV and then um, COVID happened and she was furloughed. So then I didn't have a film agent anymore. Mm. Um, right. So mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen now once it opens up again. You know, I guess there's always hope, but I don't know. Right, right. Crossing fingers. I mean, all that yeah. stuff. We we've talked about another call. All that stuff is so uh, that that whole it's just that whole industry, the whole way that optioning and even once it gets optioned and develop, you're just like you have yeah, no it's idea. It's all, yeah, yeah. We, we have something in development, and I think my mother, my stepmother in law, probably calls me like every month, like when when's it airing? And I'm like, yeah. they haven't even like written a pilot yet. You gotta, you know. You're yeah, like people, years. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people don't understand the the. My mom basically like you know. Yeah, she she's like the IMBD the, the page. Remote. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. But um, anyway, uh, hey Carrie, can you tell us where to find you uh, on social media? Yeah, I'm. Uh, what am I? I think I'm. Oh, K Clutter, K Clutter on Twitter. Yeah. Thanks, Nikki, for confirming that. Um, <laughs> Kate Clutter on Twitter, Kate Clutter on Instagram. And what am I on Facebook, Nikki? Do you know? He doesn't know. Um, maybe Carrie Clutter on Facebook, but I'm always active on all of them. I love talking to readers and other writers. So if anyone wants to follow me, um, and if you say that you were here, I'll follow you back. I just don't like to follow people I don't know. Yeah, Nikki saying Carrie Clutter on Facebook. Clutter. He's, he's confirming. Um, and Julie just put another buy link in. Uh, she put links in for all the books that you mentioned and also a buy link for uh, your book. And we also just want to remind uh, everyone, you know, for our backlist or uh, for How to Save a Life, if you order from Warwick's, uh, we can personalize those books. Um, and Carrie, it was such a delight to talk to you today. Yes, and too. We're wishing you so much success. Um, Julie, you wanna you wanna chime in? Close us out here. Yeah, yeah, Carrie, thank <laughs> you so much for spending time with us. And we just, you know, the good news is is your book is at the store. So we'll next time that um, we're not in this shutdown, we'll have you come down and um, we'll all gather in person. That sounds amazing. I would mm -hmm. love to do that. And yeah. thank you for having it in the store. Absolutely. We it. So and again, Susan any way that you get a book. You can get it from Warwick's. So you can come in and shop at the store, online, call us, however you can do that. And we will expect to see everybody at um, Liz and Lisa's event um, with us coming up. And you can also, like Liz said, you can buy their books there um, and they'll get signed and personalized. So thanks. Yes, and uh, Susan Hoffman is saying she's sharing all the book titles and author info at the uh, library where she works at in Central California. I mean, she Hi. really enjoys the events. Uh, Mizuno saying thanks, Carrie. It was great to learn more about your process. Anna, thank you so much, Julie, and everyone at Warwick's for making these online gatherings pos possible. It brings us great joy. So it brings us joy, too. So thank you, everybody. Uh, we've got a great, uh, great event coming up next week. We hope that you join us. Carrie, like I said, we're going to be rooting you on, and your book sounds amazing, and uh, just excited to see 
how it all plays out. And hopefully we will see that film or series at some point. And you can tell your film agent to get her job back. Yeah, <laughs> get a job, baby. <laughs> yeah, get the program. So. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for uh, thank, thank you so us. much, Carrie, thank and everyone. Thanks, thank guys. you. Bye. Bye. Next bye. Time. Okay, bye.